All right, guys, so this is that, that video I was, I was talking about the other day where I was going to show you um, where, uh, show you, the, I know I've talked about this a bunch of times, but be a little bit more specific on how to use the rings to, to check your uh, cylinder wear. Also, um, so, man, th this, this night turned out to be a little rough. I uh, didn't get nowhere near as much work done as I thought I would. Um, I had to deal with piston issues uh, that I, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm not going to talk about right now, but um, piston issues and fucking it just I wound up working for two hours. It's getting late, and I've all I did so far was mount the pistons to the rods, and then yeah. So and now I'm doing this real quick to show you what's up. So you see these uh, these wear spots right here, right? You know, those are very glaring issues. Like, oh my God, it's right there is where uh, it's polish. It's uh, cylinder polish, you know. Uh, so anyway, the rest of the cylinders honed out very well, which you can see are as, as well as this camera that's got low quality fucking uh, recording abilities can show you. But anyway, so to just disclaimer, right? This does not replace a good machinist or a good machine shop and their good tools and everything they can do to check. And this does not also replace, you know, boring over for a fresh build or whatnot. It's always the best way to go. You know, any any machinist that's worth his weight will tell you the best way to do a rebuild is to bore over. But again, for people to tell you the only way to do a rebuild is to bore over, that's it's just incorrect. It's not the truth because... Every single one of my fucking builds, is, except for one so far, has been to the machine shop, and I've never had any big issues. I've never had any issues, really, at all, running with the blocks. It's hone, hone and go. Yeah, like I've said a million times, also, if I have to if I have to bore over this block to be usable, then I don't want that block. I'll, I'll toss that block, buy another one. Case in point, I just picked up a B18 block the other day, 50 bucks. Shout out to you, homie, if you're out there watching. Um... That guy actually hooked it up, man, because I, I, I was kind of post, poaching on a, on, a, on a thread there. It wasn't me who posted looking for it. Somebody else posted looking for it. But a guy offered and offered his block up, and nobody gave him a, a price. So I tossed out a number, 50 bucks for a complete um, uh, spun-bearing short block is what I would normally offer. Uh, and when he brought me the block, I didn't get no pictures, I, you know, because I knew I was getting his, uh, it was a B18 with a spun bearing and cylinders were supposed to clean. When I met the guy, he left the half shaft on, the AC compressor, the post mount. He left me a bunch of goodies on the block, and I kind of felt bad because he wanted a 60, and I only, uh, only offered him 50 and wouldn't budge on it. But like I said, no pictures, so, yeah, I, I would have gave him the extra 10 bucks for what he left me. But anyway, so get back to what I was saying. Um to check the wear, right? So when if you look if you if you look in the, the manuals and shit, they'll tell you like on a, when you're using an old engine that you want to push the ring like very close to the bottom. Why? Because that's where the heaviest amount of wear is, right? So um, and even when you're doing a, a bore check, you want to check in three spots. You want to check towards the top, you want to check towards the middle, and you want to check towards the bottom. And then you do your math equations to subtract the, the lowest from the biggest and whatnot, and it gives you your average on what the bore size is. And then you use that against the wear limits. And that tells you whether you need to rebore or not. Now, now, why? What I can tell you about the the ring using that, right? So the the bore your bore tool will give you the exact bore size if you measure properly, right? But the bore tool is a little bit of a pain in the ass to use, and uh, so to skip that, I just use the rings. Now, I drop the ring in there. Now, I specifically went to the spot that has the most wear because I wanted you to see that. Now, I was going to drop the filler gauge in here and whatnot, but it's kind of hard to articulate that gauge properly and, and record. So I'm just going to assume you know how to use a filler gauge. You should know how to use a filler gauge. It's not very difficult, not very complicated. So I dropped the ring in here. That's the, the one of the most obvious spots of heavy wear. And I checked that. It is uh, 17 thousandths uh, of an inch, right? Now... I generally speaking, I know the B series and D series have, uh, you know, I know their range for tightness and loose, right? I've done a bunch of, a bunch of times. So I can put it in there and I'm like, okay, that's on a little bit on the loose side. Okay. That's a little bit, you know, that's right where it's supposed to be, uh, now. And then you get an idea of how loose it is before it's like, hey, I probably shouldn't use this motherfucking thing. All right. So when they tell you to use your bore gauge, it's, it's actually, you know, you're, you're getting the specific size of the bore. So that way you're making sure that your rings are good. So I'm using the rings to check, but if the rings are fucked, 
they're not going to tell you the proper size. So that's why it's better to go back and use a board tool because you're double checking. You're using the ring to tell you and using the board gauge. But me and rings I trust, I'm going to trust that these rings are, are straight and the 17 thousandths of an inch is indeed what we have. All right. So 17 thousandths of an inch on the top ring and uh, going and checking on what Honda says uh, is the service limit is um, your range because you always have a range on on your piston ring size right you have the low end and the high end and if you fall in in there you're you're good to go now for the standard size for the uh for the top ring is uh eight thousandths of an inch to four uh, or your standard size standard new is eight thousand of an inch to fourteen thousand of an inch so that's your that's your 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 goldilocks zone for your ring gap all right now you'll notice that mine Two, uh, two thousandths of an inch uh, higher, right? You know, uh, instead of a point zero one four, I have a point zero one seven. But then you go back and you look at the next thing is the service limit. Like, how big can your bore be before you have to bore over because you'll get blow by, right? And we're seeing, I'm seeing here. I'm not showing you on the screen myself because the uh, fucking I got the I got the light turned on, so I don't want that kind of glare. I'll just leave a link. Uh, to this page here in the uh, description for the video. So the, the service limit for the top ring is 0 0.024. So we're well within the service limits. We're a little bit on the loose side, but we're still well within the service limits of this block. So what does that mean? That means we don't have to overbore. Now, the thing is uh, here, you got that little bit of glaze or whatnot, but I mean, running running my finger along it, you do have that mirror, that mirror glaze spot, so that's not good. You'll have your your oil will run through that spot faster than it should, right? Uh, so that's not good. But do I think that this patch is big enough for it to be a cause of concern for me not to run this engine? No, I don't feel it is. Now, if you're a perfectionist and you want to spend the extra money, go for it. But this is going to be a hone and go type deal. Uh, we're using A3 rods. On A2 pistons, so I don't, uh, I would never recommend running that setup more than 300 horsepower. So I don't think we're going to see any uh, power limits uh, great enough for this to be any kind of serious problem. So for a, a, a semi stockish hone and go type deal that will probably never see more than 280 horsepower, um, I say this that works perfectly fucking fine. And a lot of times you don't see this, these, uh, these problems like this D and B series blocks I hardly ever run into these, this issue. This seems to be like a common thing for like the sidewall load on the K series that I've been taking apart. But, uh, the whole point is was just to check uh, for you guys to see how I use the rings more specifically, how I use the rings to check the bore. Also, if, if you want to, you know, do the, the three measurements, it's not a bad idea. Measure up high, measure in the middle, and then measure closer to the bottom, which I think you, you want to be like that far away from the bottom. And you could probably be like that far away from the top two and then be in the middle, of course. So that's how I use my rings to check my shit. And uh, that's why a lot of times when I say uh, you have, if you have big ass ring gaps, if you have big ass ring gaps, then you know that generally speaking, your you, your block is fucked. Now, normally, you know, now it is possible for your your rings to be just wrong because we have talked about having that issue with some NPR rings being uh, gap bad. But um, how you double check, uh, from what I've seen and from what I've heard in complaints, how the way to double check if your rings are bad versus your block is bad. If you drop your first ring in, your top ring in, and your top ring is like this, it measures out healthy, and you drop your second ring in, and the gap is enormous, then you have a ring issue, all right? And um, versus uh, versus having a um, a block issue, so uh, that would be. And then also another way is me. I have K twenty blocks for days, so another way to, to double check also is to take those same rings and put them in another K series block to see if you get similar results. If you get the similar results, you're looking at a ring issue. But if your results are different, then you're looking at a block issue. So just like you use the bore tool and the ring in combination to check your to check your sizes, you can use uh, two engine blocks in your rings to check to double check against that. Uh, but it seems like more often than not, if you have a big issue in gap, it's most likely the block. But if you have an issue where one is one of your rings are coming out within standard health and the other one is just really big then you have a ring issue and you need to get a new set of rings now um uh i guess i'll also leave a link to the loose npr rings it's uh i i, I listed the video as nip and racing loose nip and racing rings but nip and racing pistons and don't make their own rings they use npr rings it's, it's like a company deal between the two brands 
and NPR makes the rings for those guys. So uh, for what I've been saying, for people who have a, a ring issue with NPR, Jesse says that you can hit those guys up and they'll get back to you. But it seems to be what it be is a common issue is that these guys will argue that their gaps are not bad. And so I would say just, you know, cut your losses. You bought, you know, you bought pistons that are well within your affordability range so just spend the extra 30 40 dollars and buy a set of hastings and nine out of ten times that that takes care of 9.9 out of ten times that takes care of your problem it's, it was it's just the npr rings so to save yourself a little bit of hassle save yourself going back and forth and trying to mail shit back to get double checked and just get yourself a set of hastings uh, most of the people that dm me over the past year or so that have talked about the npr rings being loose uh, the, they, when they got their Hastings in, it took care of their problems. Only one person out of all the people who hit me up had to buy two sets of Hastings. Like he, his NPR rings were loose, the first set of Hastings were loose, and the second set he got were good to go. But I was only one person out of dozens. There's been a lot of people who hit me up asking about and complaining about the uh, NPR. But I'm not saying that you know the brand as a whole is bad because even though it's been like a dozen or so people hit me up, you got to think about the hundreds, if not hundreds, or if not thousands of people who buy those those pistons and those rings uh, on a on a daily basis and. You know, and don't have the issue. Anyway, guys, uh, yeah, so that that's it. That's going to wrap up the fucking video. Um, sadly, I'm not going to be able to drop pistons and rods in tonight. And I left a huge mess again. The wife's going to be pissed off about when she gets home. But, you know, hopefully uh, I can do it. If not tomorrow morning, then tomorrow night. Um, yeah, on, you know, on, on a cool-ass note, my landlord kind of randomly hit me up today. And he's like, hey... You want to buy the place? <laughs> I was like, well, uh, uh, yeah, we can definitely talk because he, he, it was kind of fast. You know, he was just, you know, throwing numbers out there. He's like, yeah, the down, the down payment is, uh, is 4,000. And I was like, oh, I was like, hold on, man. You know, that's, that doesn't sound bad or anything like that. Uh, we need to have a sit down and talk. If we're going to do, if we're going to talk about this, I'm not going to talk about it over the phone. We need to have a face to face lengthy conversation. We need to talk all the details there. So, but from that taking that 4,000, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that that's a 10% down, uh, down, down payment. Cause that's generally what most people ask for is 10% when you're buying a house. So if this 10%, then I would aggress, uh, I would imagine that it was 40, 40 grand is the total for this place, which seems about right for me. Cause I was thinking, you know, what could it be? Fifty, sixty thousand dollars It really can't be more than that as a two bedroom. It's not the best area and it's, it's small. Now, why would Chris consider buying this place? Well, two reasons. One, because I've talked to my wife several times about the potential of this spot. You know, it could be so much more. If I own the place, I could do my add-ons. I don't want to do things to modify this place that could, you know, that would eventually, that would inevitably raise the price for this place, you know, and rent-wise. But then, like, when I go to move in a year or so, I lose out on it. You know, the money I spent on this place to upgrade to for what I need, I lose out on so my back area that I have that shitty ass tent set up, I could easily use that area to extend this house or make it have an extra room. I need a place for three bedrooms if I want to have another kid. So that could be done. That area in the back could be turned into an extra bedroom. And in the back in the grass, I could either build a shed or maybe see about making access to park a car back there. Maybe concrete in that whole pad in the back, you know, make it a concrete because my kids don't like going back there. So the ideas that come to head to mind are making an extra room and turning that backyard into concrete to a concrete pad. And um, another thing would be considering the you know another thing that came to mind quick was uh, my front porch. I thought about it a long time ago of walling that shit off and turning it into a work area. Now, if you all seen my old Instagram pictures, how much shit I had on there, I had a whole bunch of shit out there and still had plenty of space. I could easily line up three engine stands without issue that could permanently stay there and still have plenty of space to put engines and engine swaps and all kinds of other shit. I could put my toolboxes out there. Uh, so that's, you know, I'm thinking of, you know, my wife at first was like, no. And I'm like, no, that's the silly thing to say no. Because the second reason why I considered moving, uh, buying the place is because if my landlord is truly wanting to be done with this, and I'm thinking they are because they're old uh, and they want to be just done with the hassle of renting, I think that that would mean that when my lease is up in two months, I would be saying, they would be telling us, we're not going to renew your lease because we're going to put up the house for sale. So that would mean I would have to move. So if I have to choose between buying this place and moving, I'll buy it, upgrade what I need, two years from now, move into a fucking bigger house, and then put this up for rent myself. Sounds like a good idea for me. 
Anyway, that's just a big old chunk of personal information there. But I figured I'd share it because if I do buy this place, uh, then there's that's you know this house becomes like a project, and there's things I can do to modify to make things make living here easier and get this fucking mess out of my kitchen area. So uh, yeah, get this mess out of my kitchen area, get it back to the front, but walled off so that way coach force can't come through and say shit anymore. <laughs> All right, guys, so, um, yeah, that's going to go down Sunday, so I guess I can uh, fill you back in on that and see what happens. All right, guys, uh, thanks for watching, and peace.